I am very excited about this parcel because I can tell what it is from the outside. It says Tentacle Sink. Haha. Yeah, it's got Tentacle Sink with it all uh, octopus going, It's a wrap! Shouting out through the loudspeaker. And, um, because yeah, I am definitely a very big fan of the Tentacle Sink's time code boxes. My first ever time code boxes were um, Tentacle Sink's. Um, the original ones that came out, I mean, they came out on Kickstarter, what? I don't know, maybe. Feels like more than three years ago, maybe four years ago. But um, yeah, it wasn't really that long ago. And they were definitely big game changers in the industry. Like, I, I mean, I talked about it on one of my other videos I had recently doing a comparison between the Tentacle Sync that I own, the original one, and the Ultra Sync one for Tiger Systems, and also the Ambient Nano Locket that I bought. Yeah, and um, so I bought them. The original tentacles back before my trip to Australia last year when I was doing a feature film because I knew we were going to be shooting with lots of cameras and it'd be nice to sort of have them to help sync everything up easily. And I got, of course, my uh, Zoom Air 4 that has got table of time code as well. And so, yes, I have now got here their brand new ones, Tentacle Sync E. Because when they port out the tentacle, the original tentacle syncs, um, three, four years ago, I think it was like, maybe, maybe it was Kickstarter or Indigo, one of those crowdsourcing platforms. And um, but yeah, the original technical things were quite groundbreaking because of how small they were, both in size and price. Because beforehand, most time code boxes were relatively big and bulky and fairly expensive in the hundreds of dollars. And they launched it, I think, under 300 American. Um, yeah, so it, it really, I mean, nobody has any excuse now not to use time code. Also, another big innovation that Tentacle Sync had done was not just in bringing down size and price, um, but also adding in a scratch mic to it. So we can now use it with the many, many DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and other such cameras we often see and see it that lack a time coded input. So you could use what they often have a stereo 3.5 millimeter input and rather than completely taking that over with a time code signal the original tentacle would send to the left channel the time code signal and then you can read that audio track later um, in some in either the software the tentacle provides themselves or um, various software programs like davinci resolve well, Premiere Pro now has a built-in and so forth. So you basically just sort of right click on the track and say, you know, um, read this as, you know, linear time code audio. Um, and anyway, rambling on. And also they had really good battery life as well. And so, you know, they last like 30 hours. Oh, so I finished my point. So on the left track is the time code. And on the right track, because it's a stereo 3.5 millimeter input, <coughs> the scratch mic inside the tentacle sync would give you, you know, the audio from that little scratch mic inside the tentacle. So that way, you still have like another backup because what if, you know, maybe you didn't jam it right and you rushed to make a mistake, maybe your time code um, recorder lost accuracy or, you know, you made a mistake or, you know, who knows what happens. So it's really nice to have that backup option even though you never expect to ever use it it's good to be prepared for the worst. And so it's quite nice having that scratch mic built into the technical sync. So you've still got another option to uh, have sync. Or even if you want to just play back, if you mute the left channel and just listen to the right channel, you can get a gist of what's going on. And anyway, so enough about the original technical sync that was definitely, I think, game changing for the industry due to the small size and small price long battery life and a scratch mic. I mean, that small, pro that small size is also a really great thing because, you know, often camera assistants or DOPs or camera operators can not like extra stuff being added to their camera, even though, you know, it's necessary stuff for the production, especially with how popular gimbals are. They are often really trying to minimize their weight. Um, that they've got on it. So it's lovely that the original Tentacle Sync was so small and lightweight. It's like a box of, a box of matches, basically. Probably might be the best sort of comparison I have. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on to the present day, or actually um, 
NAB last year, I think, which was mid late last year or something. Anyway, NAB last year, Tentacle announced their new product, the Tentacle Sync E. And it has a few improvements. One was, I think, a bit a bit more improved scratch mic. I mean, it's just a scratch mic, so this doesn't really matter. But it's always nice to see a better whatever. So, um, yeah, sweet. Better scratch mic. Uh, it would be an interesting test to do, to see how, like, the two different, my original tentacles and the new tentacle sync E sounds. Um, anyway, it's just a scratch mic. And the other improvement was... Um, Oh, the locking connection. So, yeah, I just, I really wish that, if there was one significant change that I really wish the original Tentacle Sync had, so I wish it was, instead of being a 3.5mm connection on the side, it was a locking 3.5mm connection, just like how your G3 or your Sony Wireless have a screw-in locking 3.5mm connection. It would just feel more secure. I mean, like, I've never had it pulled loose, I think, on a shoot. But still, like, it's still like a worry I have in your mind. Like, what if that happens? I'd rather it was a locking connection. Um, so, Tentacle Sync sort of fits this in the sense that they now have a little clip thing that clips over the cable. Oh, I have a cable here. So, yeah, I mentioned in my earlier video I was struggling that I didn't have a right angle cable. Um, for the gimbal setup with the anamorphic prime on the RE Mini, the weight and everything was just too much. It was too front heavy because the anamorphic primes are really heavy and the gimbal just wasn't capable to be strong enough to move it forward for the weight distribution, just giving me a bit of inch of room to put in a straight connection. So instead, I needed a wide angle connection. I didn't have a wide angle connection. So the people at Tentacle very kindly sent me, aha, a wide angle one. Thank you very much, guys. That, that is... Um, I, I should probably have had, I mean, I sometimes wonder, like, should I have had this from the start of my kit? Because, like, my logic is that a straight one, you know, it always just comes in straight. and never might, like, you know, butt into the body or cover another port. So a straight one just kind of seemed more logical. But, yeah, there are times you need right angle ones. So I guess you really should have one of each. Just have your bases covered. And, of course, I guess one acts as the backup to the other one. Anyway, yay, I've got a right angle one. Thanks, guys, at Tentacle. Um... Anyway, um, so what was I saying? So this is the end that goes into the tentacle. So in the new tentacle sync E, you kind of got a little clasp thing that sort of like helps lock it in. Now I kind of wish it is an actual genuine 3.5 locking connection, but I guess the benefit of this other approach to having a locking connection is that all of the cables you originally brought for your first tentacles, the original tentacles, are still going to be compatible with the new tentacle. So that's nice, because if they've changed it to a 3.5mm locking connection, I mean, potentially you might have need to buy new ones. I mean, not really, because you could still, you could, as long as like, the way it sits in would be fine. Anyway, it's still like nice, you can still keep on using these cables, because you know, people spend, they spend more on cables than they spend on their time code box. Um, you know, because there's so many different kinds of cameras out there, so many different kinds of st standards for time code connections. You need a lot of them. Um, anyway, finishing off my point that I was making about the new improvements. Oh, of course, now I've got to get down to the final and biggest improvement of them all. They got Bluetooth. So, I mean, other companies have got this sort of wireless... Um, network that you can use to communicate between the timecode boxes. So timecode systems, for instance, with the UltraSync 1, have got their Blink network. And so you can have, like, I own, own a, a Wave, for instance, and the Wave sort of allows you to communicate between the other um, UltraSync boxes. And, um, or you can even, you know, set up an, one of the UltraSync 1s as a master or slave themselves. Anyway, um, and uh, the other companies don't have their system. So, anyway, it's really nice that, um, you know, uh, um, Tentacle have got also their own wireless communication between their boxes. And the great thing is, you know, the Tentacle Sync E is still the same great low price and small form factor, low white, as the original one was. 
And um, anyway, so the Bluetooth um, basically enables you to sync all your Tango boxes up wirelessly. So rather than attaching each one by one to your recorder to sync up, let's say you're doing a big reality TV shoot and you've got a dozen cameras out there, you've got a dozen Tango boxes to put out there, you could spend quite a while in the morning like jamming each time code box. Now you can just, just turn them on and they'll all sync up all at once together. And also the app, or the, the Bluetooth means your app because oh yeah, that's one of the cool things that the original Tentacle had is that you had an app basically that allowed you to um, sort of do settings <coughs> via either USB or if you're using an iOS app with an Apple device you do a 3.5 millimeter connection out of the one anyway um so yeah, you could change settings and, and and write the name of the thing and you could um yeah have control over it and, and set time on it and so yeah you still have the app but now you can change it without even you don't even need to bring a cable you can change it by bluetooth and you can also monitor um all of your time code boxes via the app and i think they just they put a new update to the app as well I forgot what the new update is. It does something. Anyway, it's good to see that the guys at Tentacol are not like standing still and they're updating the app and, and bringing out new products like this. Um, anyway, enough about the Bluetooth. Oh, I should finish this. It's not just, of course, the app to control it. They have some other apps as well. So um, one of the apps is they have um, on your phone, basically just records audio, but it'll use Bluetooth so that the audio gets recorded with a timecode stamp. So then you can easily basically kind of have like a body pack record dock your cell phone on you and then have files to then sync up easily via time code with um, your camera. So that's that's kind of like a cool little feature. I mean, I can't see myself necessarily using it much, but it's nice. You never know when in a pinch you might have some little problem and you'll be like, oh, I can solve it this way. Like for instance, um, if a person's wearing a suit of armor the, the, what your wireless cannot transmit through the suit of armor because the metal all around it will be blocking the radio waves. And so that's why people might buy a body pack recorder um, to use instead of wireless. And so they can still have a lav on the guy with a, with a suit of armor and uh, record them. Now let's pretend I'm in some scenario and surprise the shoot springs something I wasn't expecting on me like that. I'm like, Oh, I don't have a body pack recorder. I didn't get around to organizing or hiring one. It's okay. I can save the day. Just use my cell phone, use the technical sync E, and have time code stamped files. You know, even in some sort of like difficult scenario like that, it can be solved. So, even though like I can't think of any immediate use I have, it's nice to have this little like tool um, trick up your sleeve to save you later on when you might have a use for it. And oh, I forgot to mention the last app. That Technical Sync E has um, made. They've been busy, haven't they? They've got they've got three apps that they've made. My last app, they're actually quite excited to try out, and that's why I've been actually meaning to get a Technical Sync E for a while, but I just didn't get around to it because I've been busy with other stuff and other priorities. But yeah, like when I first heard about this app, this was my thought. It's basically a time bar. So basically, all that app does is just displays the current time code accurately via Bluetooth. You know, so long as it stays within range of the Bluetooth, um, so you know, of course, you've got it distributed across all of your Tycho boxes have out there. It's going to be, it's going to have accurate. I mean, you'll also have a bit of a, I guess, screen lag slightly, but I mean, we're talking about very small offsets here. So yeah, you're going to have a, an, an accurate um, time code display. So, for instance, maybe you have a script supervisor, and, you, and now they can know what is the correct time to write down in their notes because they have a time code that's been displayed on their phone right there all the time. Um, and I kind of thought about making uh, like DIY frugal smart slate. I could get um, an iPod Touch because by the way, this app unfortunately, this is like the one thing I don't like, they only run on iOS devices. Why guys? I mean like Android is so popular. It's the same thing with Zoom F18 that I got. The app only runs on, on Android, sorry, on, on Apple. So it doesn't go with all my Android products I have. But yeah, not a big deal because I mean I bought an iPad mini pretty cheap and I've been buying the iPad touch iPod touches really cheaply. So like an iPhone is a bit pricey, but the thing is I don't need the cellular connection for our purposes. I mean, I kind of want a dedicated device anyway, just for this purpose. So get the iPod touch instead. It's basically the same as iPhone, 
but so, so much cheaper because you don't have, you know, the sell your foot phone stuff and you can pick them up on eBay really cheap. So, as I showed in one of my earlier unboxing videos. So yeah, just get some of these iPod touches and put a bit of Velcro in the back, get a dumb slate, Velcro it on, and there we go. Now every time we slate it, we can also see the time code running at the bottom. Be just like another backup measure to um, have there for syncing. That'd be useful. Anyway, moving on, let's actually open up this box. And, um, ah, thanks guys. I wrote like a nice little note to me. Hi David, have fun with your syncy. And, um, yeah, oh, and it's got here my serial numbers. So let's not show you that. Because you need to use your, I think it's a serial number, or do you just simply hook it up with the tentacle sync? I can't quite remember. But basically, each tentacle sync comes with a free copy once you download it and authorize it. Um, a free copy of the software to use to um, sync it via the time code sent to the audio channel. So you basically just you'll just read that audio channel, the time code sent to it, and then it'll just add the correct time code stamp to the file. But like I said, there are other programs that are already doing that, like DaVinci Resolve. Um, anyway, yeah, this is my I, I I'm gonna do another video when I have I don't have my original tentacles with me at the moment, but I'll do another one comparing them side by side. But my immediate gut feeling is this feels like it's thinner. Um I see they've changed the on off button instead of being a button you push down. I think it's a one you just sort of slide up and down like this and it probably oh yep, yeah, we can see the rear light is turned on. And I bet if I hold it, um, then when it turns on, it'll be green instead. So basically Yeah, see now it's green. Well, my ability to say it's very small on that screen, I'm sure. Um yeah, so basically, yeah, they're very simple to set up. I mean, once you've done the settings via your app, so that it's set to the right time code, uh, sorry, set to the right FPS, I mean, basically just need to set the right FPS, or you want to choose if it's mic level or line level. If you're setting it to a time code input, I recommend line level generally. If you're setting it into a camera's 3.5 millimeter jack, like I am now, um, well, with, with, with my, I've actually got my Aperture ALAV mic just, just up there um, running into my camera. Um, on that 3.5mm jack. So yeah, if you're sending it obviously into a camera audio, you want to send it at mic level, because um, line level will be too high. So line level is for when you're sending it into a into a, a actual time code port on an actual camera that supports time code, like a Sony F5 or an Ari Alexa or a Weird or whatever. Um, if they changed what USB... Damn it. Yeah, because they used to be using, was it mini USB? Now they're using a USB-C connection. I wonder why they changed it to USB-C. Oh, that'd be why. It charges up faster. So, I mean, like, it's a trade-off. I mean, on one hand, you've got to use different cables than what you originally had with your original tentacle sinks. Um, on the flip side, USB-C is becoming very common now. Of course, it comes with new cables for this charging, and of course, um, uh, yeah, new USB-C cables are super cheap. Actually, my Ultrasync 1s use USB-C as well. So yeah, it's becoming a very commonplace connection. And the upside, of course, is now they will now charge even faster than before. Although I already found that the original technical syncs, you know, they, they charged up pretty quick. Simply because like they had such a long battery life. I mean, you just have them a quarter charge, and they're like, that's enough for the whole day. All good. Um, anywho, what else should I say about it? Um, it's still got like the original tentacles. They had the sort of rough side, so you could just attach it straight to a Velcro without needing a Velcro on this side. These new ones still have that, the tentacle sync E's. Um, oh, let's show. Got two of them here. You can buy them in pairs, or you can buy them individually. Um, I mean, you generally need more than one, I mean, if you're working professionally as a sound recordist, you need more than one time code box. I recommend buying them in pairs because they're a bit cheaper when you buy two of them than just one of them. I mean, I myself, I earn five time code boxes at the moment. Oh wait, no, I got seven now. <laughs> um, probably slightly overkill, but yeah, don't buy them just one at a time. Buy them, buy them in groups of two. In fact... Some people even like sell like them in like five packs and stuff. I'm not sure if Tentacle sells theirs, but I know some other companies 
or sell uh, their Tyco boxes in bigger groups. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the box you get it in, and it's, it's all instructions that tells you how to use it, but like, yeah, it is, it's so easy. Like, that instruction card is very small. Although, there's a longer one here. It's just all that legal jargon that public governments require you to say, you know, don't swallow it, otherwise it might kill you, or I don't know, something stupid like that. <laughs> um, oh yes, so, the rest of uh, the things that every tentacle sink, both, um, this is yeah, very much the same as what the original came with, and also the new tentacle sink E also comes with it. You see, as I was just saying before, two USB-C charging cables. And these are just Velcro stickers. Oh, and it comes with the rubber bands. Because if you see here, these both have, what color would I call this? Reddish orange something? So this little sort of rubber band thing, you can remove. I'm not going to bother trying to do that just now because I cut my fingernails and I can't really get the grip in underneath. Anyway, you can change these. So if you wanted to, you could put like a different color on each of your Tonko boxes. And that would be a way to keep track of them. So you see you've got a bunch more colors there supplied. This could be quite handy. So you could, for instance, know that, you know, A cam you always give the red one to. B cam you always give the blue one to. C cam always gives the yellow one. And so that way, if you ever have an issue, you know, you know to have an issue with this camera, you can, you know which time code box you should be suspicious with. And so, you know, you'll take this time code box and you'll be like, you check it on your app and see is it running the right time or, you know, has it got the right setting? And so, you know, it helps you narrow it down quicker. Or you might be like, oh, why is there this big scratch thing on the side? Has some um, AC been dropping my time code box on the concrete? Maybe that's what the reason is as to why having time code issue if you're really being you know, Sherlock Holmes trying to like track down the source of the problem. So yeah, um, that's why you get different colored bands there. Or maybe they're just a different color you prefer, you know, be fashionable. Um, and you know, you can always put stickers on the front and set it to number them if you prefer. Um, carrying it on. And so yep, they each come with uh, With a 3.5mm, 3.5mm, so that's a one time co cable it does come with. So if you want to immediately start using it with a DSLR or similar, you can use it from the word go. But any other time co cables for other cameras you want to be using, because there's so many different kinds out there, you need to be buying those ones individually. And... Am I missing... I wanted to show the little locking connection. Maybe it's hiding under this wrapper somewhere. But yeah, basically, it's the same before. So you put this here, and then there is a groove. Oh, you probably can't see on the big screen, but there's a groove on the side. So when this goes in here, that will clip in, and will stay this connected without pulling it out. And I will show you that clip. Oh, here it is, inside here. So along with the Velcro and the rubber bands, and oh, you get stickers! Everybody loves stickers. I can put a few on my cart, perhaps. So, um, we can see Tentacle Sync logo, um, Octopus Guy holding a boom pole with a blimp. Here he is, I don't know, just his eyes closed. Here he is, walking out to some music. And uh, eating popcorn, watching a movie that you made with your Tentacle Sync E's. Anyway, showing you with a clip. So... This is their locking connection that they've got. So you can worry no longer about if it will stay in. And this goes in, oh, back to front. See, and it just slides in, locks in against the groove, and now like, that's not going anywhere. So yeah, I think it was an interesting, innovative solution that they came up with. I mean, it's probably not the one I would have chosen, but it does like make sure you keep 100% compatibility with any other time code cable you might have bought, like this one, for your original tentacle sink. See, if I click that in, see, exactly the same. This stays locked and secure as well. Anywho, enough of my exciting raving on about this. Oh yeah, you also come with a nice little um, 
uh, pocket satchel thing that you can store all your time code cables and time code boxes inside. I definitely, you know, use that for mine a lot. Yeah, but mine's almost like swollen out. It's kind of a bit large, you know, I've got so many different cables stuffed in it. Um, so yeah, I've got two of them now, I can spread it across. Anyway, uh, rambling on, focus, enough of my exciting rah rah about having got the technical sick ease and I'm, I'm looking really f looking forward to trying out the different ways I'm going to be using it and I will probably have a big comparison against the original technical sync soon. Like I'm really curious like how much better is the scratch mic that's uh, inside it. That's a bit curious feature and uh, yeah let's see one of them side by side because yeah, it definitely feels like it's a bit thinner which is probably actually a good thing because like it's probably better to go a bit wider and be thinner instead so that it makes it more low profile when it's on the side of the camera. So hey, the new thin, beautiful, tentacle sync E model. And on that note, over and out and goodbye.